And then of course, any level of warfare, you always have to look at what's inside of you Amen. because we all have tendencies and, and attributes that we didn't know were there until we get into that kind of battle, you know, cause you can't defeat what you, what you agree with. Hmm. So, yeah. so, you know, so that's really, um, so when you say, um, which, when you say what's the biggest struggle, no, it's like what it's, it's been a series of them yeah, 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 and they've yeah, yeah. all been different hmm. and, and you just have to make the choice that, um, the eternal reward is so much more valuable and getting Come to on. know God yeah. in those moments, I would never that's trade good. it for the world. That's good. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Hey guys, this is Ben Lim with Ben Lim TV, Ben Lim Global. We're so excited. We have prophetess, pastor, Jennifer Evaz in the house. And it has been a, a wonderful time having you here for a Greater Glory Orange County Conference. We're so glad you're here. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. It's been amazing. Wow, wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, in, in my opinion, uh, pastor, I really feel like you, you're one of the hottest things out right now. Mm -hmm. There's something really fresh on your life I believe you're carrying something in fact somebody asked me the other day and said uh, you know why why did you choose pastor prophet Jennifer Evas to speak at the leaders luncheon and I said because there's a weight and there's an authority and there's a now glory that she's carrying right now so I mean I mean how, how do you stay fresh and you know uh, you know carry the fresh the now glory the revelatory now glory right now in this time uh, you know even in a sense, as you are emerging, although you're established, but you're also in a sense emerging to some streams and circles, if that makes sense. It, it does. And yeah. I've, I've always kept it the same. I've always just been a person that prayer is my first thing. Mm. And every day, I never miss that appointment with God. Uh, you know, no matter what happens, God and I are, are in the room together and we are having a dialogue. And when you are um, engaged with, you know, the creator of the universe, I mean, you know, his weightiness, his glory gets on mm. you. And I've always kept it just very simple like that. Prayer in the word, prayer in the word, and being consistent. Mm. Um, the second thing I would say is just keeping my heart clean and um, uh, just very much um, presenting my heart to the Lord every day and saying, here I am. Mm. Uh, you know, Lord, do what you need to do in me. Have your way in me. Fix what needs to be fixed. Yeah. Cleanse what needs to be cleansed. And I never ever present myself as, uh, you know, more holier than thou, better than thou, because I'm just like anybody else. I just am a person that gets gets on my face first. Wow, so good. I mean, one one thing I, I really appreciate about you is authenticity. And one thing I, I've told so many people for years is, uh, true authority is authenticity. Yeah. You know, God will only bless and anoint uh, what's real. And, uh, you know, so even for us as ministers, men and women of God, I mean, we're all humans, we're all people. So, yes. I mean, the greater the glory, the more real we need to be. Yeah. I, I have found when you really go after the glory, the glory is, you know, what, one aspect of the glory is it's light. And light shines in darkness. Mm -hmm. Light also presents darkness. And so mm -hmm. if you're going after the Lord in the way and the dimensions that I am, uh, you know, you have to be prepared that... Um, uh, you know, you better just present yourself authentically mm. because your stuff comes up, things are seen, you know, and, and it's amazing that everybody has things that are hidden inside their heart. The heart is deceptive mm. above all things. We, we don't know what's in there until you present your heart to the Lord and his light shines on it. You're like, wow, I had no idea. And a lot of people, they're just really in the dark, but they're not carrying the glory because they haven't gone through that process. Yeah. And so I present myself before the glory of the Lord as authentically as I can. And that's what I display to, to people as authentically as I can. And just be honest when I'm having a bad day, bad week, bad season, because I know everybody else does. We mm -hmm. might as well just be honest about it. Yeah, yeah. So. Wow, that's so wonderful. And of course, it's refreshing. It lets a lot mm -hmm. of guards down, which is yeah. freedom. And that's how the Holy Spirit can move as well. Right. I mean, I think, uh, you know, uh, you know, we love uh, women ministers. Mm -hmm. We believe it's 100% biblical. You know, it's yeah. it's something that Jesus displayed. And even for yourself, being a, a woman minister, and of course, your husband, Ron, is also a wonderful apostle yeah. pastor as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, how do you feel, uh, you know, being a, a woman of God, a woman, and being authentic, even to the charismatic church world? Uh, you know, do you think there's... <laughs> You know, I'm sure not everybody could take that authenticness, 
Right. Um, yeah, they may be offended or, you know, but how do you deal with that? And for all, all the other women of God watching as well, or even men of God. Yeah. Right. I, you know, I've, I've stated this to many people that when I minister, I'm just me. I, I mm. won't do fake. I won't do hype because I can't carry that. I, I can't yeah. carry that facade. Mm -hmm. um, I, anybody can do it for a little, little while, but you can't continue with that. And I want to be a person that lasts. You know, again, one of my values is authenticity. My second huge value is being a finisher. Mm. And wow. that I'm going to finish this race and not stop short, not stop three quarters. Uh, you know, and, and so that's a constant um, presentation of the heart to the Lord mm. and a realness to the people. That I don't know how else to do it is just to be that kind of person. Otherwise, I won't finish. Something will crack. You can't carry fake. Mm. And so you've got to be real. And so for women, especially when, you know, women, eh, how do I explain it? It's, it's, we always present our best side to each other. You know, I mean, there's the behind the scenes conversation, but when you get into a place of leadership, we have a hard time presenting our, our flaws and our mistakes and our struggles. We really do. Yeah. And so I'm trying to be the person that doesn't do that. I don't even have that down perfectly. You know, sure, I could be yeah. I could even go further. And I'm I'm still working on it. Mm. But I'm I'm trying to present a realness so that people can feel that they can they can run in this anointing, uh, in this glory, uh, and be themselves as well. Mm. Wow. Because yeah. obviously, you know, God loves us as uh, our personalities. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean he actually enriches it though we die to ourselves, but that's when our best selves manifest and resurrect. Right. And I mean, I really like what you said, prophetess, about finishing. And you know, mm -hmm. that's been, it's, it's been so daunting on me. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, how do we finish the race properly? There are so many rising stars, right. burning stars. I mean, they come up one day and then the next day they're gone. And there's a lot of hungry, emerging, go-getter type of people. Yes. And you know, I mean, uh, how, how do we, you know, destroy that mentality, you know, right. especially with social media and mm -hmm. all these things? I mean, I mean, you know, how do we destroy that? How do we overcome that? Well, I have found, especially um, true apostles, prophets, those are the Lord has truly anointed and called. They also become a target of the enemy mm. and the enemy does not play fair. It's, it's, you know, I, I struggle the most in probably that late night hour, you mm. know, when, when you're tired. Um, when, uh, like if I'm here in a hotel, nobody's around, I have nobody to call, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and you know, the thoughts and the thing, you know, when you get hit really hardest. And so a lot of people, they're not comfortable talking about those kind of struggles and how bullied you can get, um, demonically and harassed demonically. And I, that's one of the things I was trying to bring out this weekend about that demonic harassment where you say, you just say uncle and you just submit so you're not harassed mm, yeah you know yeah yeah that's what what men and women of god need to learn to navigate and overcome is those real difficult moments um because that's where you gain authority and that's, that's where good. that's where you become the heavyweight is when you can go through those seasons successfully come on wow go through those seasons successfully yes uh -huh. Or if you break down, let's admit it, let's get help, and let's just keep going forward. Amen. Don't stop yeah. in the middle. Amen. So. Though a righteous man falls seven times, still it gets back up again. Yes. And uh, I mean, I think there's there's two extremes mm -hmm. in, in the church world right now, which is, you know, there's the hyper grace. You know, I mean, let's just keep sweeping under the rug. Let's just, yeah. you know, keep moving on. <laughs> Nothing happened. Yeah. It's already paid for. And then there's the other side, which is, you know, stones thrown, persecution, yeah. <laughs> judgment, you know, we right. got Facebook trolls, you know, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah all, all that type of stuff. But I really feel like there's a real healthy balance that, yeah. that the Lord's bringing yeah. in this day and this hour because, you know, I mean, we want to see people finish well. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we want to see young, emerging, older, uh, you know, prophets, just everybody finish well. And right. I mean, w what do you think are some keys? Very practical mm -hmm. for myself. Yeah, yeah. I have... Uh, several layers of accountability. I have uh, one particular team that I have. They're my personal prayer team, mm. and they know my stuff. And that takes a lot of trust yeah. because they can hurt me. Yeah. Okay. So, so I have that. NDAs, confidentiality, all that. Yeah. I want. I, you know, I'm just like we're we're either gonna do this, sure. you know, yeah. relationally real, or, real. or we're not. Yeah. But, and and so I have like accountability because I know that I'm not any better than anybody else. I can get in trouble. 
I have seasons where I struggle, where I need the covering in prayer, where I can I can call and say I I need help, and and then you know um, I take care of my heart, I take care of my family, I take care of my husband, uh, you know just keeping my relationships really healthy is is key, and then having good friends. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and a lot of times we're so, so pushing to be awesome and get the book out and get the get the TV shows out. You know, we're mm -hmm. so pushing that we neglect the things that that keep the heart whole Come and on. keep it healthy. Yeah, yeah, have a life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, be a mom, be a husband, be a father. Yeah, don't just be married to the ministry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and be sold out there. Right. And you know, I think again, as you're saying, uh, your authenticity. I mean, you know, this is how Jesus would be, and I feel the glory rests even heavier um, on the brokenhearted, yeah. you know, because Jesus said mm -hmm. that my grace is sufficient in your weakness. Right. And so the more we embrace our brokenness and give it to the Lord, yeah. the more the glory of God's going to rest upon us. And right. I think that's what a lot of people neglect. In order for us right. to go into the greater glory or the yeah. next level, the next season, right. we need to die. We need to confess. We need to humble ourselves. We need to repent. It's a mm -hmm. continual thing. Yeah, continual and there's, process. there's yeah. a balance in it. You know, like I'm not the whiner. I'm not the, you know, mm. constantly looking for, uh, you know, please comfort me, comfort me, you know, that kind of person. You know, I'm a, I'm a woman of faith. Yeah, come on. And I believe, I believe the word and I believe his promises. And, um, but at the same time, you've got to have the right structure around you. And mm -hmm. structures will change from season to season, season depending yeah. on what you need. And it's nice if you can anticipate it. You don't always anticipate. All of a sudden you find out, oh, I've got to restructure here. Yeah. And that's okay. Um, you know, but, but at the end of the day, what does the word say? What has Come God on. told me? Come on, yeah. Um, you know, as I was sharing earlier before the show, you know, what be others won't be you. That's something I've been really Come resonating on. on. I heard that from the Lord, mm. you know? Um, I heard from the Lord, Satan tried to defeat you. He tried everything, um, uh, but he didn't. You got weaponized. You know, those Come are things on, the yeah. Lord speaks to me to keep me in those seasons that are, that are difficult. And, you know, so, so that's, that's how I live it out. But, um, you know, moment to moment, day to day, eyes on Jesus, trusting him, working through it, and, and just letting everybody know that, that, you know, I'm just like anybody else. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm here. I'm still alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still showing up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, one, one thing, again, uh, there's, there's, there's something so profound. I mean, it's, it's an impartation of mantle you carry. Yeah. Every minister should, which is yeah. a deep prayer life. Yeah. And being saturated in the mm -hmm. Word, being on our face, on our knees. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're all a product of prayer. Revival, mm -hmm. renewal is always yeah. an overflow of prayer, intimacy with God. But, I mean, obviously, if, if, if you had that type of life, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there must have been a struggle or there mm -hmm. must have been a difficult season. And, you know, I mean, talk to us about, you know, I mean, what was maybe one of the most difficult seasons in the ministry or, or you know in your personal life that you've mm -hmm. had to overcome with prayer practical word applying the truth I mm -hmm. mean I, I'm sure some people you know this this might help some people. right yeah yeah well when you are you're called to nations you need to have muscles that maybe someone who's called to a city or region doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. need to have mm -hmm. because you're called to heal nations and flip nations and so that that means intercession. Mm -hmm. What kind of intercession? Spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And how do you learn those demons? How do you learn those those spirits? You actually come against them. Yeah, 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 <laughs> or they come against you. Like like there's there's lots of trial runs is what I believe the Lord allows. So that what you overcome, on, you know, yeah. that's how you get the nation. So um, I've learned Jezebel very personally. I've learned Leviathan. Personally, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> I've learned Python. Sure. I've learned religion all because I've had to stand in the wake of that. I've had to stand and face those things. And those are diabolical. Um, that's, that's a level of warfare that most people don't survive. And I think mm. the Lord just gave me the ability to sure. stand, wow. not necessarily avoid. And so, yeah, 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 he gave me the ability to stand, but I had to learn it. Mm. Okay. And then, of course, any level of warfare, you always have to look at what's inside of you Amen. because we all have tendencies and, and attributes that we didn't know were there until we get into that kind of battle, you know, because you can't defeat what you what you agree with. 
Hmm. So, yeah. so you know, so that's really um, so when you say um, which when you say what's the biggest struggle? No, it's like what it's it's been a series of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they've yeah, all yeah. been different, hmm. and and you just have to make the choice that um, the eternal reward is so much more valuable. And getting Come to on. know God yeah. in those moments, I would never that's trade good. it for the world. That's good. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Wow. <laughs> Well, so uh, getting to know God, you know, everything is about befriending the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I mean, how are you knowing God in this season of your life? Um, I would say there's a depth of intimacy that I didn't even know existed. Mm. Um, and it, it's a just a heart intimacy. And it's almost like you don't even have words for it. It's, it's a feeling. It's a sense of His presence. I've always been after His presence continuously. But this is this is uh, this season. There's been a depth, um, and and you know we've just. I felt like not that he hasn't been close. Maybe I've just come closer, mm. or you know something's shifted in me yeah. where I'm. There's a depth that's awakened. So so I know that the river of the spirit is is deep. It's uncrossable. It never ends. Yeah, yeah. And so to think that we get to a place where we arrive in our love walk with God, yeah. that doesn't exist. It, there is no end point it just keeps building and growing so i appreciate it it's, it's securing me and stabilizing me the love of god mm. uh you know it's like i can fight any war if i if i know his love like that that's so good yeah wow 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 and you know i think well i tell people all the time prophetess uh the day you think you've arrived is the end of your revival yeah <laughs> you know and uh yeah. <laughs> And, you know, I mean, he is an endless ocean. He's a bottomless right. sea. Yeah. And, you know, let's just keep diving in, jumping in, yeah. drinking deep. Right. And, I mean, I mean, man, I'm the most hungry. And, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, we, we, we brought you in, really, I mean, because there's something on your life where I'm like, our ministry wants that. You know, we want that. We need that. Not only because, you know, it's really got to bless the woman. No, we're beyond that. Yeah. Because... Even myself, as a man of God, there's something on your ministry yeah. where we're like, hey, we want that. We, we need that even more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would say in this season, because uh, you, know, you, you start out, like, you're an you're a, a unusual young man who has, like, a lot underneath him already. You know, just, you've done a lot mm -hmm. at this age. And, you know, just speaks to what's to come in your life. Yeah. Um, but there are seasons. There's the starting out season. There's the vision and the dream. And I'm going to... I'm gonna lay hold of, and then there's my season at, at my age where you're you're looking at the people who didn't make it now, mm. and you're looking at the people who started well, they they were anointed, yeah. but they didn't make it, they didn't finish, and so in this season my my thrust is okay, let's look to the end, and let's finish, and let's prophesy to the end. I'm not going to be like others who either they fell to sin um, or yeah. they committed suicide, mm -hmm. um, you know, or, they, or, you know, they, they damaged themselves so much trying to cope that they didn't make it. I don't want to be that person. So I'm really focusing on how do I finish well? Yeah. How do, how do you last and do things at the level of anointing that I'm committed to? You know, because you can break down yeah. if you're not if you're not careful, mm -hmm. and so that that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I I really like talking to leaders, mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurs, uh, about this because mm -hmm. then you can, in a sense, come to a place of becoming too commercialized, yes. or being too manufactured, yes. or so managed that everything's like a picture perfect utopia luciferic almost you know yeah. and, and occultic yeah. and it's just pentecostal yeah. charismatic <laughs> religion yeah you know uh instead of like a true genuine anointing and so i always love talking to leaders how do we keep it organized yet organic how do we right. keep it so how do we keep it spontaneous revival fresh fire glory but at the same time there's structure and there's the apostolic and yes and uh, i mean i i love just picking the brains of leaders like, okay, you know, hopefully they don't get commercialized or they don't, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and there's, that, there is an element to, you know, with prophets, apostles, there is the business side, you know, and mm -hmm. you have to have organization structure. Your people have to feel a sense of order when they come into the room with you good, because yeah. they don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't feel organization. If, if things are just, you know, out of control. And so in that sense, um, I want 
I want order. I like I like good government. My husband is probably way extreme over here, and I'm over here, and so we're a good tension for each other. Mm, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, 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 he likes things very well timed, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, I'm like, uh, I don't want a timer. I want a river, and yeah, neither, yeah, yeah. neither one is right or wrong. Sure, yeah. It, but it's a good tension, and every every week we have these discussions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About which tension are we going to lean toward in this season? And you know, and, and then so that, God just messes it up again. And right? God, yeah, and he does mess it up. He just invades us out. Yeah. yeah, and there's plenty of times where he's just blown our, our, you know, blown our boundaries, and it was the Lord. And you know, and yeah. then we have that discussion again. Well, how are we going to manage that blown sure. boundary? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although revivals a mess, right? Revivals yeah, messy. Is. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, but I, I feel prophetess on even for yourself. Yeah. Phew, Wow. And I, I know even for our ministry. Uh -huh. You know, I mean. The tent pegs are expanding, you know, the wineskins are yeah. exploding. There's so much expansion, right. acceleration, because, you know, I really feel like oh, so many prophets, kingdom entrepreneurs, so many people of God, we're, we're in a now season, yeah. entering into a new decade, yeah. and a lot of us, were feeling this, oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm having this growth spurt mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, what, what would be your heart for, for them? Because I feel like so many people are coming into the greatest increase of their lives right, right. now. And, and you know, I mean, there's a changing of the guards. Yeah, you know, where, yeah, yeah, you know, things are shifting. They are. You know, yeah. And so, I mean, from your heart yeah. to them, you know, I mean. <laughs> well, you, just because God called you to do it doesn't necessarily mean you will do it. You, we're really supposed to raise up people. Mm, yeah. And you can only be as big as your team, as big it's as good. the people that you have groomed and, yeah. and raised and trained and equipped. So if, if you have a, a big call, a big mantle, that's, that's really a big equipping mantle. It's a, it's, you know, that's the only way you're yeah. going to, you're going to do this it's well. Good. Yeah. And it is, um, it is much better to train people, even if they do it better than you, than to not train people at Amen. all. Yeah. That's that's really the call. Mm -hmm. Is train and equip. Amen. Um, as prophets, apostles, you know, it's Ephesians four mandate, and um, and and that will keep, help you to keep your sanity. Yeah. <laughs> so, Amen. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. And um and of course there's a lot of pain and struggle, you know, kind of going through the seasons, you, you know, will. flushing things out, but I mean, that's being like Jesus. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. While while prophetess, is is there any any last words, anything that you would like to share to our friends and family watching online right now, is there anything burning before you just close us off in a, in a prayer of impartation? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to encourage you, you know, some of the, the things that we've been saying are, are really hot on my heart about, about finishing, yeah. um, uh, about establishing yourself uh, in a way where you are whole. And because we are called to serve the Lord in a wholehearted way, that means we have to take care of our heart and be whole in our heart, otherwise yeah. we can't do that. And so I think what's probably, uh, what I should pray over is really pray over your heart um, because uh, you, you will go the direction of what you believe in your heart, you will go in the direction of what's in your heart because out of your heart flows the rivers of light. Mm. And so I want to pray over that because if that's, if that's doing well, you will do well. So Heavenly Come Father, I just thank you that you are, you are the Lord of our hearts. And I pray over the heart of every apostle, prophet, every person who's going to hear this, every person who's, who's called to lead. Um, and and you, you delight in our prosperity. And so I pray over their heart. I pray, God, uh, that, that you would heal their heart. You would resurrect the yes. dead places Come of on. their heart. I pray that you would enlarge their heart so that they can obey you, Psalm 119.32. And I pray, Lord, that you give them largeness of heart so that it can lead big and mm. lead well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I just feel like God's just releasing a surgery in the heart right now because yep. it is all about the heart. Yeah. It's out of, out of the wellsprings of life. It flows. It's all about the I I feel like the Lord is doing it. Yeah. yeah. And pure yeah. wells... Pure waters, right. pure flow. Absolutely. L like when Gideon's army, they lapped the water and they saw the reflection of themselves because that is the water of the word. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Prophetess, uh, we love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. you and the whole movement. You and your church family are really thrusting forward into and um, Harvest Turlock, 
the praying prophet. How, how can people find you, follow you, come to your church, etc., etc.? Okay. Yeah. Well, if you come to our church, it's a Harvest uh, Church in Turlock, California. And we have a couple campuses in Turlock. And, and then also jenniferevaz.com. Um, you can find me on my website or uh, Praying Prophet on social media. Wow, Prophetess, it's been so great. We love you. We honor you. We're so encouraged by everything that you're doing. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Guys, this is Ben Lim with Prophetess Pastor Jennifer Evaz. And this has been such a wonderful uh, interview. And we pray that you will continue to go deeper into the realms of God's glory. Bless you.